happened yesterday. We were returning from sliding and somebody contacted us said uh, Dan Gerard, the president of the Cochrane Vintage Snowmobile Club, wanted to meet us. So we went to their pretty cool event, a dinner for uh, Tom Saul. He passed away from cancer, so they have a uh, little bit of a fundraiser for him every year. Which way is it, Simon? Is it it's down there, right? Um, so we went to the dinner, met a lot of really nice people, hung out with them, it was pretty fun. And they gave us a really cool opportunity. We get to go to the Snowmobile Museum, the Cochrane Snowmobile Museum, and uh, just get our own little private tour. So why don't you guys come along with us, we'll check it out, and see what kind of cool rides they have. We can't pass up that opportunity. The people in Cochrane are very nice. They were super nice to us. We got invites to go riding all over the place with all kinds of different crews. We took up uh, one crew on it and we had a, a really good time. Good bunch of guys. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a nice small town. It's got a great feel, great vibe. Now we get to check out all these old sleds. That's gonna be fun. How you doing? Louie? Yeah, come on in. We'll, we'll start at the beginning of the, the front door. Oh, hold on a second then. Yeah, we'll go over there. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I'm like a squirrel <laughs> when I see nuts. <laughs> There's a lot in here. Yeah, I can kind of explain to you how this all came you know, about. Okay. Okay, so when did this whole museum start? Uh, in 2003. Uh, the snowmobile, the OFSC club here in town started just a little wee little thing in the uh, natural uh, resources uh, fire hall. It was only for the winter. They were testing something out and I went and seen the, the, the guys that started it and I said, hey, I said, we're the vintage guys. Like, you guys are, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we said, so then we started talking to them and the town CAO was part of that. And he said, well, I have a building for you in the Heritage Village back here but uh, 50 machines it was packed. So we started uh, 2004, 2005. So we started discussing all that, like how you know we can expand already. I said, listen man, we can get a big place full of sleds. So uh, it took from those years all the way to 2012. And November 2012 is when we had the grand opening here. 2012, and how yeah. many snowmobiles do you have in here now? Right now we're a little over 100, 105, 106, because there's a couple that are going in and out like for, for different activities. Okay, so where do all these snowmobiles come from? All over the province, some from Quebec. We even had one at one time from Saskatchewan. Now, are so, they owned by the museum? No, they are all individually owned by private people that uh, would rather, you know, let us display their sleds and, and turn around and, you know, hide them away in a garage somewhere where nobody ever sees them. Right well, that's now. a great idea because there's a lot of rare items in here. Yes, there is. It should be seen. Well, that's what we think, anyway. So now, if you bring your sled here, is there a period of time you got to leave it here? Like, does it have to stay for a year? No, or no. We uh, we have it. We sign agreements, and of course, there's uh, 24 hour security. Uh, it's a, you know, all year long, and it's a heated building, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and there's also like a blanket insurance from the town that covers in case there was a tragedy in here somehow. So the town covers the building. That's right. The town the the town owns the building. Yeah. It was uh, grants from uh, from the, uh, the Heritage or whatever, I can't remember now, it's been a while. Yes, and I know. I worked with them and, and all that. Anyway, HFC, I think, is uh, what they were yeah. and that. So uh, between that and the uh, other grant, it was anyways. We got uh, some money to build this building here. So, but now we've asked for a bigger building. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because uh, we can easily get uh, two to 300 sleds uh, I get phone calls all the time, you know, and people call it from all over the place. And uh, we are getting one in the spring. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, it's actually a Chimo, and because our town mascot's the polar bear called Chimo, yes. we've been researching to find one. It was built in Quebec. It's a mini sled. This one here is going to come from uh, Michigan. Oh yeah. Yeah. The gentleman's ready to to let us have it in the spring after he shows it off a little bit. Very nice. Yeah. So yeah. the idea of the snowmobile in Cochrane. Skidoo was the very first dealership in Cochrane for the whole province of Ontario. This is where it started. The little track sale where a dealer of uh, 
um, of the industrial machines for Bombardier. Right. So it was, and they had a really good partnership with uh, Armand Barmelzi. So that way they they, uh, they started here. So the first dealership was here. The reason we had we put this little cabin in that is because this is how Snowmobile got developed in Cochrane. People have remote cabins all over the bush here. Uh, they have the rivers and the lakes and all that, cottages and that. The only way to access them was the snowmobiles. So that's where uh, I see yeah. the traps. Look. Well, yeah, yeah, some of those are mine. But this was the idea to, when you came in here, to bring you back to the old days, you know, and, and go from there. Even the mattress in there is a straw mattress. Oh, yeah. We had somebody make this a straw mattress. So, nice. yeah, yeah. So, you know, we can't forget the old house. We put that in the corner. Yes. <laughs> you got to have that. But well, I can't wait to see the, uh, you know, the different variants of snow mills. In the early 70s, when uh, the big snow really started rolling through, yeah. it was late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. How many manufacturers were there? Oh, close to 200. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty crazy, right? I remember buying a, a snowmobile maintenance manual. Yeah. Remember that one? It was my Haynes or whatever yeah, it was. I've got a couple yeah, of and uh, there's it's just model after or ma manufacturer after manufacturer. It's pretty yep. crazy. Yep. So do you have most of those models in here? Well, not not two hundred though. No. But we have a, a large variety of machines. Um, the, the thing is that we wanted to sh to depict the uh, the evolution of the snowboard. You know, from the original ones to you know some of the newer ones and that and, and that. So like. We got that snow cross machine from uh, Dave Juanis uh, because he's our local, right. our local athlete, and, and sure. at the same time uh, he brought his machine in the spring. So we're pretty proud of Dave. Who oh, no, he's uh, yeah. being the CSRA champion. Hometown talent. Well, this is it, you know. So uh, we wanted to display, and we have his grandfather's leather machine, race machine. Well, that's really neat. yeah, yeah. So you know, three generation. Mom raced also. Uh, Mom uh, did the uh, Challenge Canada and the, and the Hair Canada. So she's a long distance uh, racer and a drag racer. My grandpa was oval and, and drag, so and cool. Dave's a snowcross guy. So. so what's your background in all this? <coughs> Crazy snowmobile guy, that's all. Yeah, you're just I, a fanatic, right? In 1961, I rode on a tin cab machine and I was just a little kid. And uh, I fell, I fell, I broke my nose and, and on the machine, and I've been hooked ever since. I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I've, I, you know, I, I've always looked at machines and dreamt about machines, and I think I, I, I look at machines 365 days a year. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I, I can't see myself living in an orphan not having a machine. Yeah, I, I even told my wife that you know when I die, you got to bury me with one of them. There you go. One, one of my special ones. So yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So I mean, this is has been a labor of love. We're only a small group of guys, but like I say, all of this is built by the guys itself, like the inside. So the build, the, the building owned by the town, but everything inside is ours. And uh, I, uh, being a welding teacher, I included uh, my students in, in doing a lot of the, the posts and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And actually, the racking was all cut, cut by students, and at the window or chopping school, and uh, we just brought it here and we assembled it all. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, like right. I say, this is all built by the, the members itself. So. Very cool. Well, yeah. let's uh, yeah, go for it. Let's go for a little tour, take mm -hmm. a walk around. Yeah. Snow track. Yes. So we're not going to get very, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> There's a lot of sleds <laughs> That's in okay. here. Yeah, we got, so, so if you look at the body of this, it looks can, like the, you can tell it's a skidoo. Yeah. But it's a Scandinavian machine. And this came up through the north coast. So they came in through Moosonee, and that's how this one managed to, to make its way to Cochrane here. Well, well, there's a there's a the relationship between Scandinavia and Canadian and, and Bombardier. Right? Yeah, but I don't know if it was that 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 early. Yeah. Because if you look at the body of that, you'll see 63, 64, 65 is over there. It's the same body. They just you know did a little work on the cab, right? Right. On the hood there, where yeah. the light is. But other than that, it's a it's one of those, right? Unfortunately, the gentleman passed away. Here. Not too long ago that owned it, but his wife said to me, she says, it's still there. I said, yeah. She's like, we'll check once in a while. I said, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I said, well, you know, nice. we'll take good care of your machine. And Very nice. So, yeah. It's, uh, it took a little bit of convincing uh, for some people. You know, they had machines in, in their garages and stuff like that. But, you know, once they saw what we did with them, it's like, wow, okay, you know, we're okay with you guys. And so, uh, if, if you look at the guy's eyes, you know, he's pretty, like, stunned at all these big fish can all that little hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, we got stuff to <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, this is our little cabin, and uh, of course, you know, you get the odd person that drops off like these bottles, you know, uh, Tomorrow Dry, that, that was a, oh, that's pretty cool. a name brand, yeah. yeah. My dad had some stuff in there, and my father-in-law had that stove, and he, he had that as an apartment, he used that as an ashtray. <laughs> And, oh, I, hey. and I said to him, I said, you know what? I said, I'm, I'm taking that stove before anybody else's. What yeah. are you going to do with it? He said, I said, it's going in the museum. So, nice. Yeah. My wife was a little, little kid when he had that. Wow. Got, yeah. So, yeah, the bed was made by one of our members, and uh, the guy did all the carving and everything, and then uh, his wife made the, uh, the mattress out of straw and that. So, wow. Trying to make it as authentic. Uh, eventually, I'd like to get a couple of like mannequins dressed up like old guys. Oh yeah. And maybe some kind of a sound system when you come in, you know, like trigger it off. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> join, join us for you know for something in your yeah. game of cards or something. So you just sit around and you think of all the other things you can do oh, God, all yeah. day long. Oh yeah. yeah. Thunder jet, snow jet. Look how large that is. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the '74 model. They only made the '340s in '74. And then in 75, they made the 440. So we just got one there. It just came in. So we, we put it there. We haven't had a chance to move things around a little bit. So uh, now this, this machine has a very interesting story to it. This is a, it was never sold by the dealer, which was Gerard Zessel in town here. And my buddy finally bought it from them. He was an apprentice mechanic there when they got the machine in 75. They raced it, but they never knew exactly what they had. Now this is... There's a lot of SSTSXs, but they're made different than this one. There was only a handful made uh, like this. The carburetors are different. The seat is different. The, uh, there's a whole bunch of differences. The decals are different. But this was rammed into a tree. And uh, my buddy got it all in pieces. And he managed to convince him to, to let him have it. And uh, he put it back together all by memory, never knowing exactly what he had. And, and we started looking for parts. and forget it like it's yeah, yeah. The, the other SSD SXs aren't the same yeah. that beat a 396 Camaro in the summertime oh yeah that was in the ditch the Camaro was on the pavement and he had to stop for a culvert but he had him beat it. no way and Frenchy Clucci I don't think I've ever heard of him Frenchy Clucci had a tendency I don't know he was one of oh, the yeah. first guys to do water crossing way back when oh it was a big thing like when water crossing started Frenchy uh, came to Cochrane and borrowed this he was a Polaris uh, factory racer out of Timmins, and he came and borrowed this, and he crossed the Tarby River with this. Wow! That was one of the first sleds too. Yeah. So, but uh, Ralph Gerard, the, the the now owner of of uh, Gerard's Esso, uh, his dad owned it, started it. Ralph raced the 340 and this machine in uh, in the winter time. Uh, the wow! Yeah. So, anyways, we can keep on going. And on and on. Like I say, you, you see machines here that are fully restored. And some are survivors. That's good. You know, like we, that. we have both both kinds. You know. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to have a you know a, a representation of all the things, and they don't have to all be restored. Yeah, like this one here is all all original the way it was. Uh, the lady what we went and got it. Her husband was the the uh, Scorpion dealer. Okay. And uh, when we went and picked it up, he had said, "Oh yeah, you come and pick it up." And uh, when we went and picked it up, she came outside and said. Where you guys go with my sled? You know, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take good care of it, you know. And uh, her son comes in. And he, her husband's passed away now, and he was a great guy. And, and uh, her, his son comes around sometimes. And, yeah, but she's still there. Right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah don't yeah. worry about it. I'll get it. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's how it's done, right? So. Yeah. So, so this machine here, uh, the four, uh, what is that? The, six, the Yamaha. The sixty-nine. Yeah, it's a sixty-nine L three fifty-one. Okay. So that's, this is the first real year that Yamaha came out with a snowmobile. They had experimented before that, but this is a, the beginning of, of that. Rob Green and his brother were getting this from, for Christmas by their grandfather. Fortunately, the grandpa died a couple days before Christmas, oh. so they weren't able to get the machine right away. So as kids, uh, Rob told my son this, he said, you know, you're, you're, you want your sled, but mom won't let you have it because we've got to do the wake and the funeral yeah. for grandpa and all that. The year after, their dad bought the dealership. So, and there's still a Yamaha dealership today in Collingwood. So, uh, so Rob, and actually, well, Parkway Yamaha, and uh, his brother's Ted, and he lives in Latchford, I think. And Ted told Rob, he said, listen, he said, you know anybody in Cochrane that has that museum? He says, send it up there. Well, Rob deals with my son through Kimpex, and he said, I heard your dad's got something to do with that. 
So he picked it up, brought it here, and yeah. uh, brought us some Yamaha clothing also that they had. And so they had sold it, they brought it back and restored it, and, and it's here now. So nice. Mm -hmm. I, I remember all these sleds, like most of these sleds, these GP 493, or four, yeah, 433s yeah. were rolling all over the place when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took a heck of a ride on that one. Uh, not by the, the owner now, but I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I saw him walking down the street, and he knew me. He stopped. He said, "Here, get on." Oh, these no helmets in those days. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Full speed down the street. <laughs> sure. Good old days in the on the back roads. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Anyway, some of these have a little story to them, a little bit of history. Uh, this one here was used a lot. That's one of our members. Uh, Robert was their last name. It was his dad's. And I mean, these guys use that for firewood. You can tell by the by, on the pictures. They got oh, yeah. loads of firewood. Yeah. So it was used as a utility machine. So over the years, we probably had about 50 different dealerships in Cochrane. Um, what was, uh, like everybody tried, you know, to have a dealership back in the day. So Alouette were sold here by the uh, uh, family that had the Gulf gas station. Actually, now they're right beside Tim Hortons at Crevier. Same family, a third generation, third or fourth generation there. And they were Alouette dealers and I pumped gas for them and they were selling Alouettes in the day. Uh, Scorpion, Scorpion was here by Mr. Andy Noel. He had the, the Scorpion dealership. Mercury's were sold here, Mass Ferguson's, um, uh, well, Motor Skis. They're going to be sold where the snow is. Yeah, but you know, all the small communities around us have given up on, on that. You know, like you look around here, and today for a small town of 5,000 population, we still sell three of the four major brands. We got two dealerships that are striving. The only one that we're not selling now is Articat. And, and I mean, at times different through the, the you know, the years of having uh, snowmobile dealerships here. We had already got a couple different dealerships, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's still, when you look back at, you see like Timmins, Timmins, they sell the four brands, but they're 50,000 population and we're only, and we're only like yeah. I say, 5,000, yeah. you know, uh, Capus Casing, uh, they, they, they're bigger than us, but they sell, I, I I don't know if they said they yeah they sell Articat Polaris and yeah they do have all four I think hmm. so but I mean it's like you know for a small town like five thousand oh we're yeah still, we're still well, doing you get a lot of people passing through who blow up their sleds or write them off oh and, yeah uh, so they need a new sled <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that yeah this one here just came in from Quebec and and that SR is pretty special I mean that's that's rare to see one of those kicking around like this it's it's mint it's from Sudbury the guy the guy emails me every so often. The guy with the SR, how's my baby doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, and that just came in from Rouen about two weeks ago. And that's my very first Yamaha. That's, uh, I bought that the year my son was born, and that's what my son and daughter learned on. And oh, yeah. I used to have another one the same that I bought from Pennsylvania, and it just wasn't geared the same or, or jetted the same. And, uh, but we used to tie both machines end to end and groom trail with that. And we used that, that was my trapping machine. Oh yeah? Yeah, how I got stuck lots. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was, I was my cousin's. I was supposed to get this. And I walked into the dealership, he didn't have one. And the guy turns around and he says to me, he said, wouldn't you rather have that one there? It's got electric start and my wife right away. Yeah, yeah, I can start it. <laughs> you know what, I think she's never started it. Oh yeah. All these years. Check out this Mercury. Uh... Uh, the owner's from here. He was down at a wedding in Winnipeg and saw it there and decided, hey, I might as well buy it and bring it to the museum. The guy owns a few sleds in here, uh, and uh, that's what he did. He well, check out where the exhaust is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Under the seat. Warm your butt. Yep. <laughs> this is one of mine that I uh, found in the barn here in Val Grande uh, a few years ago. The McCullough. Yeah. There was only 60 of these and only 67. Uh, I had another body that was trash. I still got the uh, the hood for it. Made by and the chainsaw company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were actually made by Fox Track in the states, but they sold they sold only. And this one here, ironically, was a gentleman from Southern Ontario that owned it, but he would come up to Cochrane hunting with it, and ended up in a barn in Valgagne. And one of my former students calls me up. He says my grandfather's selling the farm. He says he's got an old skidoo. So I said, send me pictures, and he sends me pictures. This is that's not a skidoo. And I started looking and researching it. Then I found out it was a, a color. It runs. I got it running too. I did. I painted all the rest, but I didn't want to touch the, the hood, and I wanted to leave it the way it was. For sure. Aluminum hood. 
Yeah. No, yeah. I learned. <laughs> aluminum shell. Yeah. <laughs> I had one of my uh, wife's uh, friends make me the seat and the little bag in the back, because that's how they came with. Nice. A little storage bag. Yeah. You know what's... Uh, do you, do you have a, uh, an inviter? No, we don't. A nice inviter. I love that sled to drive. They're funny as heck. Yeah, 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 they sure do. Right? And you can still get pretty pristine ones. These uh, rubs have, uh, have quite the, the story here in town. There's a gentleman here, uh, you can see his uh, mobile. He had a dealership in was it Elmira, Ontario, or El... Anyways, he had a dealership in the 70s closed the dealership, moved up here, bought a float plane, and started doing some uh, outfitting, okay? Nobody ever knew he had any of this. So all along, people would go up to him and say, uh, yeah, if you, uh, I heard you got skidoos. No, he would say no. Not, not the most, you know, uh, casual person to talk to yeah. kind of thing. So these guys here, um, uh, Gaetan and his brother Mitch, Mitch owns uh, Skyrench, which is a company that uh, repairs planes here. Yeah, yeah. And they were working on Ron's planes. And uh, he turned around one day, he says, I hear you got rups. Yeah, you want to buy them? They, you wouldn't believe the stuff these guys have. I saw it and I was just shocked. Yeah. They've got three sleds assembled. They've probably got enough for another sled. All in pieces, all brand new, all in wrappers, like tracks. Like still? Tunnels. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. Cases of windshields, brand new. The guy is like he took his dealership packed it all up and came and came up here. He had a brand new motor in a box still in his closet wow. of his house and all that. So what yeah. are they going to do? Are they going to use it? Yeah, they, they, they're planning on building maybe another sled because they figure they got enough, like the skis, they've got everything. It's, yeah. it's, uh, because these ones have been used. Yeah. But it'd be pretty cool to have one yeah. put all back together, right? Yeah, for sure. So somebody tried to buy all their stuff and their wives said, no, 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 boys, like, hang on to it. Oh, they haul with uh, three pickups and three trailers full and then they had to go back and get some more wow. yeah it's a that's pretty, amazing rock. yeah yeah it's yeah they, well they've taken them out and, and, and ridden them in our ride with them like yesterday's ride okay. not not this year but uh they, they've ridden them around and that so but uh yeah they put them up in the uh in the uh in their shop their, their aircraft shop and they've done all the work so very cool yeah it, it's amazing i was asked to go down and have a look at all their stuff and i thought oh this is crazy yeah. like there's brand new suits up there suits and boots and hats and mitts and that were never used that he incredible. never sold he, like yeah he just packed up the dealership and moved there was a, a scorpion dealer in i think in the pm uh he's got two brand he's a he's a massive ferguson who made scorpion well he, well, he was a massive ferguson dealer at, at the yeah, time and then scorpion bought him up yeah so he has two brand new in the crates up on the shelf wow wow and, yeah <laughs> he says don't even bother asking yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's nothing my, uh, my son's an SRV guy. Okay. And, yeah. and he managed to find this one here not too long ago. But he, uh, in, in, uh, when he was a young lad here at home, uh, there was somebody that wanted to sell him an 82 SRV and it was painted up and it was all trashed. And the guy wanted $800 and he said, no, I'll wait. And then in the spring, the guy was moving and he said, well, I'm stuck with it. I got, he said, 200 bucks, come and get it. And my son completely rebuilt it to look like this. To what it's supposed to look like yeah. but he had the motor all done up and he used to race his buddies at the high school with yeah. all their big machines right oh, yeah. and they'd say well what's how come that thing's so fast and all this and he moved out to saskatchewan sold the machine and then i convinced him to go back and buy it so he sold it twice and now he still owns it again but this time he it's uh, it's blue like an srx and it's got a long track and yeah, nice. yeah but then when he found this one he said okay i got then he's got a newer one also but yeah he's a srx an old srx guy like me uh well there's a there's an 80 there yeah but we both own a 79. he's got a couple of 79s i have a 79 that i'm working on so possibly we've had 81s we've uh, sold loads and Yep. Now there's a couple of sleds missing because they were out for the ride. Oh yes, that's so right. They're gone. Well, I'll check out the snow plug. Yeah. So this is this is a very rare model. There's only 20 of these built. And this one here has uh, a guy argued with me a little while ago. He said there's no way that had a West Bend motor, but it has. It's this is number three in production out of 20, and it had a, a West Bend five horse, and. Uh, 
they called it the five pound motor mm -hmm. and that's that's what it is wow it's not fully done yet because the motor has still has to go into it. Imagine so. five horsepower pushing that thing. Yep. And yep. a person. Actually, this one here was bought by the company out of Toronto called Eskimoter. Okay. And they had a rear engine machine, mm -hmm. and they wanted to see what the, the this machine could do in comparison to their Eskimoter. So they bought and, it. And then after that, they sold it to a gentleman, um, uh, Elmvale or somewhere around to yeah, and uh, he was a, um, a snow cruiser dealer. And uh, my son got it off uh, his uh, his son there a couple of years ago. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, Dave's one. This is grandfather's machine. Oh, and his yeah. mom, she raised it. You know, and grandpa raised it. PNL saw sales out of hers. You know that. You should know that. PNL. Mr. Yep. Mr. Uh, Juanis and his wife were lost in a plane crash. Oh. We were lost for that's right. What twenty three years or something like that? That's right. They found him, I think, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. two or three years ago, they yeah. found uh, Mr. Joinis and that. Apparently, uh, Dave's mom has a picture where Mr. Joinis is on the podium, and he's got the two Villeneuve's on each side of him from uh, World War Racing back in those days. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all Bobcat. Bobcat was built in Kirkland Lake, Ontario. There's only a handful, apparently, like fourteen. They were sued by Husky because it resembled the Husky too closely, right? So the gentleman that writes the books on, on vintage machines, uh, Pierre Pellerin, uh, I met him and Pierre was telling me, he said, did you ever know anything about a Bobcat? And I said, yeah, I said, got it. we have one in Cochrane. He said, you gotta be kidding. So he came up here to document that machine. Um, what happened was he's got all the documentation from the Husky family. They gave him all the documentation. So he had all the lawsuit and everything, oh, all the yeah. paperwork. And he wondered where he could he ever see a, a, a bobcat. Wow. Well, we got one. Awesome. <laughs> Primitive looking, but that's, that's what it is, yeah. That's a bobcat. Very interesting. So they had to stop the production. Now, recently, <clears throat> um, you know, so Mr. Sabourin, okay? Well, his grandson or great-grandson contacted me lately because somebody was questioning about a bobcat out of Kirkland Lake. And he said, well, I think that was my grandfather or great-grandfather that built those. I said, yeah, he's got the same last name. I said, for sure, that's what it is. So he doesn't know much about him, unfortunately, through his family. But uh, yeah, so it was a machine shop or whatever. That did. The Diablo sits up there usually, but it's out for the ride. It was up right. yesterday. So, uh, so how do you move all this stuff? You have a little uh, forklift, a little push muscle. <laughs> you hand bomb them all around. Muscle, eh? yeah, 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 yeah. OK, yeah. so you got to tell us about this here. I see this airplane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is there an airplane in here? Yeah, exactly. So George Barris, obviously, uh, I don't know if you know of anything of George Barris, the king of customs from California, okay. was sent six Alouette uh, villains or race sleds uh, for them to build Alouette a unique machine. Uh, so they used four. So there's two, two tracks underneath two skis. They used four machines. Uh, and, and I mean, that was their, their, their villains with their, their race sled. So those are all 650 colors. Okay. Um, ironically, two of them were never taken out of the crates and were left in the backyard in California because they don't know any different, right, right. to rot in the salt air. Right. But uh, so after Alouette closed, here's the, this is how they would drive around from dealership to dealership in a trailer, the kind of a makeshift oh, yes. um, glass trailer. Yeah. And they would show it off. My cousin remembers seeing it in Thunder Bay because he was a snowmobile guy. And uh, he remembers seeing it there. It is several other people have told us that they remember seeing it at different dealers. So Alouette would kind of show this around. And, and, uh, and back in those days, it was the same as uh, Artie Cat with their Boss Cats and, and the Skidoo and Polaris. They all had machines. Uh, Budweiser even had a machine. It was, Budweiser's yes. looked like a dragster yep. with uh, tracks on the back. Yep. You've probably seen I've pictures. I've seen those, yeah. Yeah. So this was Alouette's version of that. And... Um, but apparently, uh, we're, we're not sure if it ever rode on snow much, but apparently it was tested on the, on the beach in California. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what happened, the machine was sold to a dealership in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, Agri Sports. They still exist today. Uh, when my son lived out in, uh, in Saskatchewan, we used to go there to that dealership, but the machine wasn't there anymore. Um, and the way it was found, uh, this uh, Bill, we're going to look at his name again, Fullerton. He was a, a director for uh, Bombardji at the Bombardji Museum, and he was also the director for the Can-Am race, uh, motor, motocross race team. They were in Regina for uh, 
a weekend of racing. And Bill had sold one of his own race sleds out there and he was looking for it. And this young boy with his pedal bike turned around and said, hey, mister, he said, have you ever seen a machine with four motors? And of course, Bill right away, what are you talking about four motors? Where? On a, sitting on a post. So uh, he said, where? And uh, back in those days, in the 80s, they put the kid in the van and out they went yeah. to go looking for it, right? But they went to his uh, parents' house and they asked the dad. And the dad said, I don't know. He says, well, I'll go with you and we'll find, you know. So they went to the dealership and here it was. There's pictures here sitting on posts like that out there in Regina, Saskatchewan. Oh, my God, in the weather. Yeah. It took four years for them to convince them to purchase it. So they purchased it. They brought it to Vancouver. They had it fully restored to what it is today. It was in the Valcour Museum. And um, George, uh, Bill actually went down, like I spoke to Bill. Bill went down to uh, California to meet George Barris and get all the original paint codes and everything. And, you know, to get actual pictures of what it really looked like when it was done. Um, and uh, it was in the Valcour Museum. And then uh, Valcour had a new curator that walked in one day and said, anything that's not skidoo, out the door. So a lot of the machines went to Top of the Lake Museum. This one here, we had heard it was going to a collector in the States. And uh, even Bill told around and said to me, he said, well, you, you guys will never get it. He said, you're, on, you're second in line for, for this because Top of the Lake wanted it and, and whatever. And uh, so after I went down to Ottawa and I started making, within three weeks it was here, I called Bill up and I said, Bill, I said, you're going to have to come from Bracebridge to uh, Cochrane to come and see it because it's not in Michigan, that's for sure. It's not going there. Good. So we've got a five-year contract with them. Uh, it's the, uh, and, I mean, it was in their warehouse. And, and that's what happened. Somebody sent me a picture of it sitting on a pallet with a plastic cover on it. Eh? And uh, immediately I started dogging, like, okay, I've got to find this somewhere and hopefully bring this here and, and that. And now, uh, I guess they had, when they restored it, did they ever start it? We don't know. We don't know. One of our one of our um, our, our gentlemen that's a, a race engine builder and, and racer. Uh, he was here yesterday from uh, Rouen, Quebec. There, he's a long time Arctic Cat racer, and he said there's no way that this thing would run properly with the size of pipes, like the the holes yeah. on the pipes. Okay. But the engines are all locked up. They locked them all up, so we couldn't try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, the first date we brought it in here, all the guys we brought it in with a forklift. Yeah. And we brought it into the door here, and the guys right away. The mechanics in the, in the group there, yeah, yeah. everybody checking the motors, and, you know, can we get this thing, can we, should we start it up and that? And then, uh, yeah, it's all locked up. So. Wow. But what, a, what, a, what a, a, an amazing artifact to have, right? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, OSM Magazine and STV wanted us to bring it to the Toronto show. Mm. And I said, you know, I said, like, they were willing to to flip the bill for the transportation, but it was such a it was such a thing about you know all the the the, the paperwork that I had to do just to have it here. That I thought you, you know guys the, chip the paint on that and wow well, we're done yeah. you know and that's it and and actually there's a little paint chip on the wing in front and we doc it's all documented because <laughs> it was like that when we got it right yeah, so yeah. the wings the wings are taken off. Uh, with the, the transporter, it just just fit in the cube truck. We got well pictures there. Yeah, that's us loading it in Ottawa. Oh my God! And um, yeah, we were lucky. It just just cleared, and of course uh, the guy with the red jacket, he's the uh, curator of uh, I mean of the warehousing there. And Gordon is looking at us. And you sure no? You're not gonna scratch it? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're okay. We're okay. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what else is going on. I'll just yeah. get B rolls. For a very long time. Like from the very beginning, and then others, and they say it, it, it changes. Like these two came in this summer, and it's the first time that Fred Ritter out of North Bay is, is with us. But his longtime friend of his has been with us from day one. The guy that owns Bobcat, he had six machines here. Ah, and yeah. He just took them all out. And I said to him, Can you replace them with something? Yeah. Look at the, how the wheels are all rotting on the Oh, no I'm kidding. Yeah. Just falling, just literally falling. Yeah, apart. drying up, eh, and that. So yeah. that one doesn't run, but my goal, I did find an, a good engine for it, and I definitely want to drive that one someday. I have the time to take uh, all the, change all the bogeys and, and get it running, because I really want it. This was my neighbor. He was a Snow Prince dealer. Him, and, so this is his machine, and the other, the other one on the other side was his wife's machine. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was an awesome guy. Oops, never... 
We, we put this here for a reason, this little sign. I guess I'll catch it later. So you remember where was which sled? <laughs> yeah. He, uh, this gentleman here, that's our engine builder guy from Rwan. Like, he built sleds from scratch, this guy. He's raced for a long time. And we keep teasing him. We said, we'll put a, a sign there because that's your spot for your sled. You're bringing it, see? So he's got a, well, he's got a mess of sleds. Our all already cat, so we're hoping that he'll... Uh, yeah. This one here is a survivor. Yeah. Yeah. This is the only one that's owned by the town. Okay. It was donated by a family out of North Bay. Uh, they didn't want them to donate it to us, so they're the club. Is when somebody donates a machine, we say, well, you can't donate it to the club. You got to donate it to a member. Oh no, no, our lawyer says no, and so the town agreed to take it. And so, okay. There you go. <laughs> but that family thought that the town was going to restore this. Oh. Who, who were they? And I told the guy. I said, come on now, as if they're going to take taxpayers' dollars and, and restore that, you know. So, so yeah. Look at the white track on that. Yeah. Yeah, 20 inch. Mm. Actually, you know what? The, the second sled that I rode on was one of those. My uncle had one. It's got the ownership right attached around the old uh, coil on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was given to me by one of my students. Same thing. Some of my students would just call me up and say, Hey, I don't want that sled anymore. Do you want it? <laughs> you know. Okay. So that's the, this is the first snowmobile that I blew a piston on. Oh, yeah? Yes. Uh, 275? Yeah. Uh, or a 340. It was a 2000. Yeah, yeah that's 275. Yeah, that's free air. Yeah. Yeah, twin free air. Yeah. And yeah. I remember, uh, I remember, it wasn't running right, and I was, it was just barely hobbling along. I popped the hood while it was moving, and I grabbed a spark plug. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, that was the first, uh, first time okay. I figured out how to tell if it was bad. I pulled the plug okay. out, put my thumb over it. And, I collects these really weird. He's got another one that he was supposed to bring to the museum here, but a silver line. That's a boat company. Wow. Th those are American brands that are very limited in production. Yeah, yeah. There's a polar bear out there, a machine called a polar bear, and and, and I located one in New Hampshire, and uh, I'm hoping that you know one of these days that we can make some kind of arrangement. He uh, he would drive it to the border in Ottawa. And I go to Ottawa all the time, so right. in, yeah. my daughter lives in Canada. Okay. So uh, my uh, my son-in-law is actually one of the CB CBSA agents at the at the oh. airport. Oh, nice. Yeah. So they're both from the north, but that's where they work. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same guy that owns the uh, the uh, Mercury on the other side. He, uh, <laughs> I could have had that machine way before he did, yeah. but. And the owner, the original owner, said to me, do you want to buy this? And I said, nah, I'm not into ski rules. Like, you know, and, I thought, and that was before I really got into all of this. To get the museum going, and then I thought, oh, I should have bought it. Yeah. <laughs> it was cheap. I should have bought it. Oh, yeah. Can't have them all, is what my wife says. Well, that's, yeah, I get the same story. Yeah, I get the same story all the time. So that's another one that I love. <clears throat> and there's, like, you see the suits up there. Oh, right. yeah. With the tags. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. That is insane. Yeah. We didn't want to, we tried to figure out, like, where could we put the suits for that? They could still be looked at, seen, and, but without, you know, uh, being on the ground, somebody touching them. Like, yeah. So we came up with that idea there. Yeah, wow. At the shop. That's the <laughs> shop, eh? The, um, yeah. That workbench was actually one of the little workbenches. When they closed the dealership, we managed to grab one of our work benches that was there. And, uh, so we kind of set it up this way. That's our polar bear cup for our first oval this year. Nice. Yeah. We wanted to get something nice, and our first guy's on the on the cup already. That uh, back snow, the snowmobile on top, the sleigh, that was my son's. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He got his first black eye on that. Slammed in, <laughs> slammed in the, went down the hill and slammed in the back of my sleigh behind my sled. Nice. <laughs> Five years old, comes home, tells mom, look, mom, what dad did, grab me a black eye. <laughs> yeah. That's that cool. motor there. Oh, yeah, this one here. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, see, a lot of people didn't know that Bombardier played with the. Uh, horizontally opposed. Yeah. Horizontally opposed. Yeah, motors. and they were, they were in the uh, Alpines and Olympics. Some yeah. Olympics had them. That motor there is a Kohler. Never been run started. We got that with that um, 
that uh, snow bug, that yellow snow bug. The guy gave us that. It was in the box, and unfortunately, the box, the bottom was rotten because it was still in the box, wow. brand new. So I said, it's it's worth more money sitting like this than if you ever started the darn thing, right? The ski boost looks great. Look at that land. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So this this is one of our guys that does full, complete restorations. Okay. So you can tell which are his. Like yeah. he did this for some, like for the other guy. It took him a year and a half to do this. These ones are, and I mean, he goes and he finds the authentic, everything authentic to, to the max. And I, I know that uh, ski boost part. There's a guy in the states making them, and he went down there to get it, to get the, the, the. He brought him an old one so the guy could mold it. Yeah. So that's his restoration. Wow. Yeah. This old double track. 64. I dug that up from the bottom of a gully, and uh, I started working on it. And then finally, Gaytan there. Uh, well, it's his son's name on it, but Gaytan, he's the brother of the Rupp guy. He's with the Rupp guy, and uh, I sold him that. I sold it to him. I said, here, you might as well. He wanted it, so I sold him that and the single track 64. The two of them, it's over there. Nice. So, and he restored it at the, their uh, airplane. Uh, he takes them out and uses them at his camp with his boys. Oh, nice. Yeah. They're, they're, they're guys out in the bush and that, so. Silver bullet. Yeah. See, that's a restoration again from that same guy. It's funny, a few years ago, at the, at the Toronto show, there was a, a silver bullet there, and everybody was raving how nice it was and everything else, but all the chrome was painted black. Mm. And I, I knew this one here. <laughs> And I said, oh, God, if they saw this one, they'd say yeah, that, yeah. yeah. So this was a, a complete, like, strip down. He strips down, sandblasts, everything. I actually did some welding on this one for him. And, uh, yeah, like like I say, it's a, for him, it's a year project, uh, each machine. And uh, that's the way it is, right? Yep. Mm. Look at that old sleigh. Yeah. Now yeah, he's got the bells on the front. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's not his land hooked up to it, but <laughs> we put him up there because we had to put him somewhere, and we put him up there. There's so much to do here. It's hard to keep up. Yeah. So is, is there somebody, is there somebody here, like there must be somebody here to man this during normal hours? Yes. Yeah, at the front, the, okay. uh, at the front. And it's $5 fee to get in. Oh, good. And how many people would pass through here in a year? Oh, no, lots. Well, there's a, you'll look at a registry and, and if you look at some of the places people come from, yeah. like we've got people all over the world. Wow. Australia, uh, uh, Europe, uh, all over the place. That's very cool. Yeah. This is a very different one. Super Shark. Argo. Argo. Yeah. Look at that. Argo made machines. Look how ugly that is. <laughs> that is one of the ugliest snowmobiles ever, and it does look like a shark. <laughs> this is a very different one. Super Shark. Argo. Argo. Yeah. Look at that. Argo made machines. Look how ugly that is. <laughs> That is one of the ugliest snowmobiles ever, and it does look like a shark. <laughs> yeah, that one I drove in uh, two years in our uh, antique ride. Right? That's got a 493 Hertz twin in that, that uh, machine. Be the ride is beautiful. I don't know if you look at the handlebars on that one. Pretty wicked. The way the thumb and yeah. all that. Very different. That's my uh, that's my attempt to uh, oval racing this year. Oh yeah, yeah. Check this out, everybody. We made it. We made it to the big times. <laughs> we made it into the museum. <laughs> oh my God, we're a piece of history. Yeah, now we just need a banner. Hang it up there. Okay, you get it. You got it. No problem there. <clears throat> there's uh, there's something that really that's rare in Canada. That's the one from Sweden. Yeah. That's that's rare in Canada. Yeah, the guy ha has two of these. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen him riding that. Yeah, Lar Larvin caterpillar. Yeah. So Belil's Belil sold these machines <coughs> to uh, 
all the north up here. And yeah, all that. and that's why you know before before the um, before the the snowmobile started, and of course uh, you know then Belil's uh, started selling the skidoos, and you can tell by the the machines in front of the big tag of Belil's on them. So like the tin cabs and that, and they're still one of the most sought after machines. Eh? Yes, yes. This one here, this one here was used uh, mostly. It was a uh, this Mr. Gerard was a logger. Actually, he was one of my grandfather's cousins. And my dad rode in this in, in the lumber camps. And this was used to bring the groceries and bring the, the, the guys out for, for logging back in the no days. Kidding. Now, my wife's cousin in Laval, Montreal, he's the largest collector in Canada. The last time I spoke to uh, Joe, he's got 36 of these. Yeah. The guy's got his own museum now. And the Bombardier Anniversary Museum, uh, years ago that... They had a machine in the video. It was his machines because Bombardi didn't have any yeah, of their yeah. own. And it was Jill's machines. I've never been in one of these. It would be... They're a riot. Oh, it would be crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was that, that... What was in this for an engine? Those, those are uh, all Chryslers. Chrysler, yeah. Yeah, Chryslers. Yeah, yeah. This one runs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's Super Dave sled. <laughs> yeah, well, we did the unveiling of uh, the, the gal. We had Dave here and our mayor. And they did the unveiling. Oh, yeah. Yes. We did a we did a pretty big thing uh, for the unveiling and that. Yeah, watch you don't slip in the water. So the sleigh that one of the rescue sleighs from yesterday. Oh yes. <laughs> so yeah. <coughs> yeah. Wow. Well, this has been a great, like, an excellent tour. I gotta thank you very much. Hey, no problem. This is an, no and problem. great meeting you yesterday, and thanks for inviting us to your uh, event. Well, no big deal. Here's my card. If, uh, yeah, yeah. Over an email sure. and, and, and you know what, uh, for us too, if you, you know, whatever you can, power mods, we're always looking. Uh, well, we, you know, we'd be glad to say, if you want to send us a, a, a banner and we'll put it up in here. And, you know, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it because, I mean, it's, uh, like I said, it's a labor of love. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you know. Well, it's guys like you that keep this thing going and that's very important. Well, we're, we're passionate about our yeah. museum and, uh, you know. I got a kid that. asked me yesterday, what's that box at the back there? Oh, yeah. I said, that's if you need to stop fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's get All going. Right. Thanks okay, very cool. much.